So many years ago, you did uh, uh, a video about your daily workout uh -huh. uh, for your language practice, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if you can share uh, sort of your the way you go about that now and if, how that has changed from the past. That's a very broad question. We were talking about that earlier. What what exactly did you want me to say? I mean, I had mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. I remember at that time, <clears throat> mm. I was doing a lot of uh, handwritten scriptorium work and mm. uh, a lot mm. of uh, shadowing work. I was still kind of, uh, you know, it was 20 years ago. So although I was quite advanced in my studies then, relatively speaking, I was not compared to where I am now. So I'm just right. um, more mature, more advanced in, in most of my studies um, so you know I keep the same driving interests same important things um, mm -hmm. one important factor that is, uh, really changed is is uh, audiobooks uh, the degree to which audiobooks have become sort of really integral and important part of, of what I do a way of appreciating mm -hmm. literature um, compared to uh, just using them them as sort of native materials, sort of advanced uh, textbooks, I think, is kind of the way that I, mm -hmm. I did it uh, back then. But now it's just sort of really appreciating the, the narrator, what a good narrator can add to his interpretation to a classic text or, or any text, just to, you know, how somebody brings the language alive by intonation and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, really appreciate things like that. Um, just coming to terms with the limits of, of time and mortality and the number of hours of a day and just sort of really realizing what I can do. I think by the time I made that video, I'd already sort of decided that I wasn't going to learn any new languages and was just going to concentrate on improving languages. And I have pretty much helped. I have helped with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, no, uh, I would just say I'm sort of, as I said, a bit more advanced over what I was then in terms of knowing um, when you bite off <clears throat> more than you can chew and you can't, you know, really realistically, you know, try to, in a natural sense, use great numbers of languages on, on a given day, you have to plan for it. You have to, you know, try to juggle for it. You have to work it in. You have to think of ways of accommodating that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've gotten more adept at that and, you know, and found other and, and new ways of doing that. Um, I also think that uh, another a big change is, yeah, the, the older I get, the more I um, just enjoy uh, speaking the languages that I know to myself, having conversations with myself in the languages and, and not needing to constantly be reading and or listening to something, uh, but rather to really just be um, comfortable thinking in the language and speaking to myself in the language and making an actual sort of exercise or practice out of doing that. So, yeah, things like that. Okay. And what are the new ways that you sort of discovered or invented over the years? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I guess one of the main things, is, like, as I said, apart from using audiobooks as a way of really appreciating what the narrator brings to an interpretation and, and using that to model myself on, on his voice, so advanced shadowing of the narrator that way. Yeah. Um, I would say the, uh, yeah, just sort of developing scriptorium and ways to incorporate art work at various points and, you know, really sort of feeling that I'd, um, if you devote yourself sort of obsessively to something like learning languages, you can get easily one-sided. And I've always felt that I've missed more art or music or math or just 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 something else. So, mm -hmm. um, trying to incorporate some artwork into scriptorium uh, at a certain point that would be uh, a new thing. Um, it's hardly a new thing um, at all. Uh, but it goes back to what I was saying about using the audiobook as narrative and just the essence of shadowing is just. Realizing more and more how incredibly important it is to read aloud. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just maybe integrating other aspects of life, being a father, reading aloud to my children, you know, brought that home. And, you know, just mm -hmm. so I think everybody knows that. It's always emphasized that. But the degree to which it's really important and brings 
literature a lot to life and and you know when we're doing latin together latin in particular you know to, to, where you put the intonation that's not written not with punctuation not with anything else but how you put the intonation can really change the meaning of how you interpret it or un understand something so um mm -hmm. uh in order to do that um reading aloud reading aloud uh, and hearing myself read aloud um is something that i've, I've done more and more over the years i mean it was always there, you know, speaking aloud, shadowing, doing things, you know, reading aloud as I was, you know, took the, the, the lesson and did it. But now I'm talking about taking literature and reading literature aloud in sort of a narrative interpretive fashion, you know, a dramatic fashion, uh, trying to make it come alive. So um, doing that and in order to do that, <clears throat> um, recording myself has proven to be very, very important. I mean, telling yourself it's important to read aloud, it's just, if you're just sitting by yourself, it's easy to start out doing that and end up you know, muttering or not doing it. But if you mm -hmm. consciously are making a recording of yourself uh, and monitoring that recording and you know, and trying to make it, you know, you know save it or something, um, that just makes you articulate in a much, much better fashion. So um, mm -hmm. these days I, Pretty much the first thing I do every morning is I spend about two hours reading um, aloud and recording myself uh, an hour of Latin, half an hour of Sanskrit, and then half an hour, 15 minutes each of, of two other languages, sort of on a recycling, cycling basis. Um, so that's not something I did before. Um, okay. uh, something I, I tried to do before, but again, this is a question of practice and getting better at it. So it's so feeling comfortable speaking with myself is sort of particularly with the um, Romance and Germanic language families, uh, branches having what I sort of call international conferences in my head, uh, where I will um, start a conversation with myself about a topic and speaking about a specific thing, uh, and then try to just switch from language to language and keep the conversation going. Uh, and so sort of, you know, I have like start out and speaking in Latin and then in Italian, and then in French and then in Spanish, and sort of have the Romance Language Congress sort of uh, family go in my head. So um, that's something I was aspired to do and, uh, and, and now I'm happy to do a lot more of. Um, I still do a lot of shadowing, but I, again, I don't, I don't use didactic materials anymore. I use uh, dramatic readings whenever I can get them. And so uh, in order to sort of warm up for those particular Germanic and Romance sort of branch Congresses, I will do a um, <clears throat> sort of timed uh, shadowing, branch shadowing. So I have uh, on my MP3 player, I've got all sorts of audiobooks and recordings of dramatic readings of medieval poetry and, and modern novels and, you know, in all the different Germanic and Romance languages. And so um, integrating Exercise, physical exercise is also very important. So what I'll do is often I'll go on a, you know, a really energetic hike, a fast paced hike uh, and shadow all the languages in a, in a, in a branch. Uh, and then later on in the day, I'll have one of these congresses or conferences in my head. So um, mm -hmm. that's an interesting thing to do. Um, <clears throat> and again, another thing that was always uh, an ideal, but I, you know, I didn't do it so much. I didn't know how, but I'm doing it more and more and I really am. I really am <clears throat> appreciating it is um, memorizing things, memorizing um, poems and, 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 and short excerpts, uh, and then um, reciting them to myself, just you know, going them over, going over them, and particularly um, deep, profound poems such as um, Thomas Aquinas wrote a number of, of, of hymns that are like really condensed versions of his of his philosophy or theology i think and so um you know just when you when you recite something when you learn something like this by heart and you recite it over and over and you recite it under different circumstances and different times and with different nuances it's you know you're not reciting the same thing over and over you're interpreting it differently and it's, it can be quite different so um just building a larger and larger repertoire inside myself uh, and sort of playing that back or, or hearing that so again uh, most of my life i've been a long distance runner <clears throat> and like when i was in korea for instance i was go out on a run i would listen to my tape deck and my my um 
language learning, you know, the, the Asimil sort of condensed ca cassettes that I've made. Uh, at the time I spoke to Michael Arard, I think I was already listening to some, again, but it was more listening, the audiobooks I listened to was more like, for the specific purpose of like, this is the most advanced sort of didactic learning material that I could have. And now the spirit of it is, no, I, I really want to get into the literature and the narrator's voice and, 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 and the tone. So, mm -hmm. um, but I did listen to audiobooks or things like that back then when I went for a run. Whereas now when I go for a run, I don't, <clears throat> I don't take something to listen to. I, I, I have stuff already in my head and I, I play that and I speak that to myself as I go along. Mm. So for the, the Congress mm -hmm. that you mentioned, like, uh, like what, what conversations, like what topics are those conversations about? And like, is it important that the Congress sort of revolves around the same branch? Of languages uh well that's the whole point for me is that i want to you know mm. understand the connection between the germanic languages among themselves or the germanic languages among themselves and so um mm. that's the whole point is to sort of walk through them as they change so mm. you know i'll start with you know you can go in different directions but if i start with scandinavian languages i'll start with swedish and then i can go to danish because it's also eastern scandinavian or i can go to uh, Norwegian because it's got a similar tone and then I can go into Icelandic because it's there's so sort of going by connections and seeing you know sort of steps how they sort of change into each other mm -hmm. so that that sort of drives that um, but yeah I don't know I mean I'll, the kind of things I'm interested in philosophical ideas theological ideas historical ideas literary mm -hmm. ideas various things mm -hmm. so it's sort of are you saying it's like a debate that you are having but then every few sentences you just change to a new language? Or uh, not every few sentences. I try to stay usually you know, a couple of minutes at, you know, at, in, in the mm. language. Okay. Well, I, d I, d I don't know. You're putting me on the spot now. Uh, you know, I just sort of <laughs> <laughs> start out by... Um, I don't know. Just, I mean, just, just by thinking about some sort of idea that I'm thinking about. You know, mm. which, what, what makes more sense of my existential experience of being alive mm. the idea that you know truly that some sort of modern humanistic materialistic atheistic scientific experience of of life does that make more sense does a medieval mystical christian explanation of life make more sense does a does a sort of Hindu, Buddhist, karmic, you know, sort of cycle of, of illusion. Does that make more sense? So I'll just start talking about myself then. I'll start talking about that in, in Latin. And I'm, I'm very conscious of time. Mm -hmm. um, I have honed, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm perfect, but I've got a very good sense of, you know, I can, I can tell when an hour has gone by or a half hour has gone by. And so I like, I sort of set that, you know, I, I know, you know, that I'm going to go from here down, you know, down Adams to the Bythe Pack, then down to Fifth Street and up to here. And I know that that takes me how far to, to jog it or to, to, to run sprints. So I do different kinds of running while I'm going. And so I know how long it's going to take me to get there and get back. And so I have a rough idea that I've got. You know, I can I can have this conversation in Latin, Italian, French, German, Spanish. No, I'm not sure what I throw German in there for. I'm, I'm talking about the Romance family, you know. Um, but I I've got you know a, about a handful of languages I can do that in. So I think I've got about five or six like I can you know I can talk about five or six minutes each. So I try to stay in in one language for that time and then have the idea switch and just you know just keep keep the idea going but just switch into the, the other language. Mm. And is it important that you are doing this as you're moving physically? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I really do. I've always felt that that kinesthetic um, aspect of learning is terribly underestimated. Uh, and um, I do enjoy sitting at a desk or in this comfortable chair with my comfortable cat on my lap. This is great, you know, but I uh, really enjoy fresh air and movement. And I do find that that has an effect on the memory, an effect on the learning, uh, and uh, effect on the concentration. So um, 
it, yeah, it, I would say, I mean, it's something that one could do, you know, immobilized, but, you know, doing it in motion just does seem to have a lot of benefits to me. Mm, I see. Are you enjoying these videos? Try subscribing to the Alexander Arguez newsletter for more language learning content. Each month, receive musings from the professor's desk, hear student testimonials, and get book and video recommendations that will enhance your self-education. The link is in the description below. Please subscribe. You will not regret it.